enchanted exotic place is Bali, tiny island in the East Indies once owned by the Dutch, but now part of the new Republic of Indonesia. Across a narrow strait from Java, Bali is a volcanic isle with friendly climate and friendlier people. Over a million Balinese live in this tropical paradise, 93 miles long, 50 miles wide at its widest point, a land of fertile soil where a race of cheerful people, artistic and religious, live out their lives in peace and contentment. Agriculture is their chief occupation, and rice their principal food. The Balinese are easily the most expert rice growers in the East Indies. He's late, but better late than never. Seriously, it is paradise. Plenty of food for all. Nobody goes hungry. The gods have been good and food is plentiful. And there is a dignity in work that keeps body and soul together. It's old fashioned the way they thresh the rice, but it's efficient. With untiring rhythm, the girls keep up the work hour after hour without fatigue. What rice is left over is bartered or sold. Market days are busy days for the women folk who come to town from miles around in their colorful native costumes. The women are always busy, either working at home or in the field or doing the marketing. And where are the men? Why, enjoying themselves. There's a cockfight to watch. And in Bali, a cockfight is like baseball in America. A funeral procession is underway, and everybody turns out. There is no sadness in the hearts of those left behind, for Balinese believe in reincarnation, a rebirth to higher caste. Huge monuments called bantans are born to the cremation ground. Later, the festival theme is kept alive with the monkey dance, which enacts an ancient tale from the Ramayama. It tells of Hanuman, the monkey king, of the enemy who stole his wife, and of the battle between them for her possession. <laughs> the chanting imitates an army of monkeys, hence the name of the dance. <laughs> Hanuman's wife, her soul possessed of the devil, writhes her way through a forest of weaving bodies, attempting to expel the evil spirit. The chanting of the men, as ceaseless as the sound of wind in the trees, sustains and heightens the effect of mystery and magic. <laughs> evil, in the guise of Hanuman's arch rival, takes the stage, seeking to win the soul of the wife, to woo her away from the path of goodness. Hearing the approach of her husband, Hanuman's wife makes her exit, leaving the stage to the two rivals in this ancient duel between good and evil. The artistic symbolism of the triumph of right over wrong has come down through the ages in Bali, reflecting the heritage of religion and drama from across the sea in Hindustan. Age-old stories told in music and dance, with all the symbolism and drama of the East. <laughs> with the dance, the Balinese appease their gods. And in festivals such as this, they give thanks for a land of plenty. It is the belief that well-fed gods are kind gods. So the women and girls prepare offerings of fruit and flowers. High and heavy are the pyramids of temple offerings they carry aloft, walking long distances with beautiful firm bodies and graceful walks. And so, 
on appointed days come the women and girls with their temple offering. Some weigh as much as 50 pounds. The bronze bodies of the Balinese women are entirely covered before entering the temple. It's a sign of respect, just as women of the Western world cover their heads when in church. Another Balinese dance famed the world over is the Kreese dance, a drama of good versus evil in which black magic woven by a wicked witch, Rangda, causes the followers of the good spirit Barong to turn their knives against themselves in a hypnotic frenzy. The knife is called a crease. The bad witch seems victorious, and in the fantastic pantomime, the dance rises to a climax before the eyes of the watching throng. The Barong is a mythical jungle beast that resembles the dragon in Chinese processions. He represents the spirit of good, and evil is overpowered. Now the native orchestra plays another familiar theme, and a happy celebration begins. Strange rhythms of trained young bodies, elaborate costumes and headdresses, exotic music, mystic movements, fluttering fans. This is the Legong, or feast ceremonial, most famous of all dances in the East Indies. Two of the girls are princesses. The third is their servant girl. Together, the young artists become figures in a moving pantomime of joy to the rattle of shrill notes and rumbling drums. The native orchestra, or gamelan, with sounding brass and tinkling cymbal, plays music alien and tuneless to Western ears. The Legong is a ballet of extraordinary skill performed by artists whose training began at the age of three and whose careers end at 14. By that age, their bodies have lost the suppleness and pliancy required for these intricate movements. Bali is indeed a place of enchantment, with ceremonies and dances symbolic of a civilization ages old. Here, all is peace and happiness. Troubles are unknown to happy Balinese. Tomorrow, like today, they will sing and dance again. <laughs>